Let me show you my countryside Through these old headlights We can take this road as far as you want to go I'll show you how a country mile Can take us all night Feeling high in a bull's tail up an old dirt road I ain't gonna run no hide We can let the fire burn wild That's just my country Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lorena and welcome to my raw and rugged transforming into our amazing homestead. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back to you. I am wanting to do another video that is going to be added into our garden series uh, for beginners. And my heart is to help new people getting into growing their own food. You see the value, you've seen the grocery stores during 2020, you've seen how fragile our food system is, and you're ready to change it. You're ready to empower yourself. I'm here to help you, I'm here to support you, and I really want to help those people that are wanting to make that paradigm shift into actually putting the desires into actionable steps. So if you are new here, please go back through our garden series where I go through some of the lingo surrounding the seed packets. I also did a video on seed starting soil. So if you're kind of more of an intermediate, you can watch that uh, seed time program did a video on that. That is gonna help more of the intermediate to a little bit more advanced though. But for the new people that are just getting into gardening, there is gonna be a slew of videos for you specifically as well. So today we're gonna to talk about things to know before uh, getting your seeds uh, planted, kind of what to know beforehand, knowing how to plan out a garden, we're gonna go over those steps because that is one of the things that I think helped me back the most is not understanding how to organize all these random thoughts in my mind. So let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna set you here and we're gonna just have a little chitty chat about all things planning your garden. Okay, so first thing, planning garden. You're gonna wanna plant things that your family is gonna eat, right? So if you, are someone that eats a ton of peppers, then you're gonna wanna grow more peppers. If you are a family that hates tomatoes, don't grow the stinking tomatoes. <laughs> if you say you like tomatoes, you wanna grow some, but just don't grow like 10 plants, okay? So just understand starting small, there's a lot of value in starting smaller, and then next year you can definitely add to it because I don't want you to get overwhelmed right out of the gate. Once you have an idea of what your family likes, write that down. Like just go through and write the things that your family really eats the most of during your week. If you're thinking about your your entire, you know, meal planning or whatever that you go through and, and figure out what you eat the most of, once you have that, now you need to figure out when to plant those seeds. So when I started gardening, I planted peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers. Those are the three main things that I started to grow and that I actually went through and seed started. But let's say my family loves tomatoes. We eat quite a bit of tomatoes. I don't think that one tomato plant is going to be enough for my family of six. Okay, so and also family size matters. So just take that into consideration when you're planting. I would say that you need one plant probably per person through that growing season maybe two if you are somebody that really loves to eat fresh tomatoes. So now I know I want to grow tomatoes. Now what do I do? So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to know when to plant your tomato seeds. You can definitely uh, direct seed these into the ground. Granted, it's going to take a while for that seed to get to a uh, production season within its life cycle. 
So a lot of people start the seeds early indoors. And that's exactly what I am planning to do. I'm getting ready to actually plant tomatoes, which is why this is out here. So for most people, they're going to be starting them indoors. And you are going to start them about six weeks before your last frost. A lot of these seed packets, this one doesn't have it, but a lot of these seed packets will tell you when to plant them. So this packet right here, this is a Rutgers heirloom tomato says when and where to plant. Okay, so when and where to plant. So that tells you for an early crop, so basically it's gonna start as soon as the weather permits, start seeds indoors in pots or flats. That tells you when to plant them, five to seven weeks before your last frost. That way, by the time it comes ready to plant them, they'll be ready to go out and they'll be able to withstand the weather. If you planted them out too early, number one, they would get too big and they'd get root bound. And number two, if you try to put it out before it's ready, that frost is gonna kill your plants. So you don't wanna do that. And then it tells you, make sure that you put it in a sunny location. So you can put it in a sunny spot. Some people have like greenhouses. Some people put it right next to a window, that's fine too. If you don't do those options, then you're going to definitely want to get a grow light. And it says to keep the soil mo or warm, moist and warm. So you can put it above your fridge if it's sunny up there. You can get a heat mat and put it underneath there. Um, so you're just going to want to know how to take care of it once it's been planted. So that goes over when to plant your garden. So after you have an idea of what all you want to plant, you're going to have to go through the different varieties, well, peppers, tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, and just look at when you're going to want to plant them based on the seed packet in relation to your last frost. Okay, so the next thing is your hardiness zones. And I kind of went through that within, you know, just the last, um, you know, what to plant and when, you're gonna wanna know your zone. So I'll put a hardiness map link down in the description, and you're gonna wanna go through and click that to figure out what your zone is. Not all things are gonna thrive in all zones, okay? So I'm not gonna plant things that aren't gonna do well within my zone, and I'm not gonna plant things that are outside the date of when that species is gonna really do well and thrive in my area. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is what to put your plants in. Okay, so if you are somebody that is in, say, the suburbs like we were uh, up until we got our property, then you're going to want to get some sort of either a raised bed. Um, you can do like just the kind of right above the ground or you can do ones that are like raised up completely at kind of your hip height where you'll be able to work. So if you're somebody that struggles with bending over a lot, then you're not going to want to do the ones that are real low to the ground. If say you're growing a whole bunch of stuff and not just a little bit, then you're not going to want to get a whole bunch of those raised ones because of the cost that's involved in that. Now, if you can afford that, by all means do that. Um, but for a lot of people, the budget is going to be a big component, especially if gardening is something that you're gonna wanna do to try to save money. You really don't wanna be spending a lot of your budget with the garden beds. Um, you're gonna wanna spend that more on like the seeds and the type of soil that you get. Okay, so there is raised beds. There is, you can do in ground just regular in ground like we do. We use the back to Eden garden method. There's lots of different types of beds that you can use. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. There's a lot of resources online and I may do a series later that kind of hits on a lot of them and unpacks them a little bit. But for now, just figure out if you have a hard time bending over, you really don't want to do the low ones. Um, if you have the budget to do some of the higher ones, then I would definitely do that, especially if you have a hard time bending over. 
just keep in mind that if you do some of those raised ones, a lot of them are going to take quite a bit more soil within that garden bed. So then you're going to have to factor in soil. So just kind of look at all of those different components and factors of the soil, of the garden bed, look at all the pricing of beds within your area, local to you or online, and just weigh out the pros and cons of, you know, which one that you want to go with. What are you physically able to keep up with? Because if you're somebody that has the hard time bending down, you're really not going to want to get in the garden and be motivated to get out there because you're physically limited. The other part to raised versus in ground beds um, is the watering needs that it's going to have. So if you are somebody that is not really good with watering, then doing an above ground raised bed is probably not for you because they dry out a lot faster. So you have to kind of look at that on, are you somebody that's going to be able to keep up with it? then you'd go ahead and do the raised bed. If you're not, then you're going to want to do in ground because that holds moisture a lot better. The other part to that is irrigation. You can hook up irrigation on the in ground and you can on the raised beds. Um, it's just not typically as easy, um, but you definitely can do that. The other way of growing is vertical gardening. Okay, so this means that you're growing up. So more on trellises, they have like wall planters that you can get that are just kind of affixed to the wall up there. Um, granted, some of the, the like heavier plants are going to have a little bit of a harder time, especially if the roots can't go deep. Um, but for things like cucumbers, fantastic. Um, indeterminate varieties of tomatoes, you can trellis them up that wall. Um, let's say... Uh, peppers. If you had more of a petite pepper, you can get those. Those are, are on the market. You can get some smaller peppers. Those will do well. So especially if you're in like an apartment, uh, those are going to be an option that you're going to want to look at. If you have a townhouse, your patio is small, any of those kind of limiting things, you can still definitely grow a garden. You're just going to have to get creative in how you're doing it. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is your soil uh, methods or preference that you have for that. So if you don't have the money, like for my me doing a big, huge garden out here, it's like 100 by 100 foot. It's got some separation in the middle. But for doing that, buying like that deep worth of soil was not financially feasible. So for me, that was my making or breaking point, right? Like that I knew that I that was out. I could not do all raised beds. So for me, I knew that I needed to do the soil. The soil as is, is deficient. Okay, so it's very clay and it's deficient in a lot of minerals. I did a soil test. I knew that the pH was very, very low. So I knew that I needed to do at least a two inch or three inch layer of compost on top. So you can definitely build on top of the soil if you're doing in ground. If you are doing the raised beds, then you know that you're going to have to buy garden bed soil. The other option instead of garden bed soil is going to your local, um, like a lot of hardware stores will carry like compost that you back up and then you, they load your truck with like a front loader. Um, you can definitely do that. I'll put a clip here of me doing that. Um, and it was $40 for the two scoops of that front loader at the Pittsburgh uh, Country Home and Garden Center. So if doing all the bags is not feasible, um, that can get pretty costly to do all of that. So you can definitely contact and kind of poke around throughout your local, you know, Facebook groups and community and figure out who has the compost that you can buy like truckloads worth if that's how much you're doing if you're not then just buy a few bags fill up your little container um you know whether you're doing raised bed or whatever and then you can start that way okay so we talked about what to plant when to plant the hardiness zones and the types of beds that you want to use as well as your soil 
Those five things are going to help you narrow down exactly what type of garden that you want and when you're going to be planting those specific crops. Okay, so if you have any questions on anything that we just talked about, feel free to message me. Drop your questions in the comments and I will definitely uh, help answer those questions. By all means, I am not a gardening expert. I've been gardening for probably about 10 years now. Yeah, 10 years now. And I learn something new every single day. Every season presents a new lesson. Um, but I can definitely help the new people that are entering into it and some of those intermediate questions. The biggest takeaway is just get started. Just get started. Go grab some trays, some little greenhouse trays at Lowe's or Home Depot. You figure it out what kind of plants that you wanna grow. You know your hardiness zone. That's gonna tell you when you're able to plant them. You can backtrack from your last frost date. You know the type of you know garden bed that you wanna use. You know what kind of soil that you're gonna need now. Get started. Just take those actionable steps to plant your garden this year and you'll be surprised at how empowered and how amazing it is and there's lessons like I said all the time presented so there is no failing when you're trying and if you're gonna fail at least fail forward as you continue and as you get closer to reaching your goals so that's gonna be it for today's video I hope that this was helpful for you please hit the like, subscribe to the channel if this is something that you're interested in. That way you'll be able to see more videos as I continue this series of helping the beginner to garden. We'll catch you on the next one.